long distance, you can't reach me. Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's Lucy Fink here, and today I'm giving my tips for how to survive a long distance relationship. You may have seen another video of mine where Michael and I talked about our long distance story and how we got through five years in a long distance relationship throughout college. If you haven't seen that video yet, I'll link it for you right up here. Today's video is gonna be a little bit different. Michael's not with me today, sadly, but we did discuss these tips with one another ahead of time, so what I'm about to share with you is sort of our joint tips. Thank you so much to SHIP for sponsoring today's video. Stay tuned a little bit later in the video. I'll tell you about why I love SHIP and why they're such a cool dating app. But for now, let's get into the tips. I just wanna start this video out by saying that I feel you. For anyone out there who's in a long distance relationship and for someone who's going the extra mile to type into YouTube how to survive a long distance relationship or searching for tips, I really do feel you. And I wanna let you know that there are so many people out there who have done long distance, who are now on the other side of the hurdle, and who can really tell you that you can get through it. It's not impossible. People will tell you it's impossible. People will make you feel crazy for putting yourself through this. But when you know, you know, and if you're watching this, you know. Okay, quick recap in case you missed my other video, Michael and I went to different colleges. So I went to Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore. He went to Middlebury College in Vermont. We went to the same high school in New York. So we're both from the same area. And from New York, going to Vermont is going north and going to Baltimore is going south. So we basically were together and then just whoop, split up. He was a grade older than me, so he went a year before I went, and then we were both there together. So all in all, we did five years of long distance in college before we both moved to New York City and ultimately got to be together. I'm just about to rattle off some of my tips and things that you can do to kind of keep that spark alive in the relationship and to get through it and get to the other side. So tip number one is to schedule dates together. I'm talking virtual dinners, movie nights, anything where you guys can get on a video chat together and actually do an activity. Something that would be really fun is cooking the same meal at the same time so maybe setting up your computer on a zoom or a skype call i don't know what's cool these days back in the day it was skype now i'm pretty sure it's zoom or even just facetime get on a video chat platform and then just cook the same meal when you're ready for dinner set up your table even pour yourself a glass of wine light a candle and put the camera or computer on the opposite end of the table and you're basically on a virtual date and you can do the exact same thing with a movie or a tv show you can start it at the exact same time and watch it together while while you're also on video chat. Then you can sort of have those conversations that you would normally have with that person if you were together and you were having dinner or watching a show together. You can have that same commentary, but it will definitely make you feel closer to know that you're together even if it's through a screen. Something else that you can try, I personally have never done this, but I think this would be awesome, is to actually do that exact same thing out of the house. So go to a restaurant with your headphones on and have a virtual date while you're eating dinner alone at a restaurant. At least in New York City, plenty of people go out for dinner and they're sitting there by themselves. Often they have headphones in and they're listening to a podcast or listening to some music. So it would be really similar to just have your headphones on and be on a phone call or a video chat while you're sitting and eating. My next idea is to have a virtual sleepover. Michael and I used to do this one all the time and it's really funny to tell people about it because it sounds kind of silly, but it really did make us feel closer together when we were far apart. So basically what we would do is we would log into a video chat platform, we would set our computers on the back end in the settings to never sleep so that the screen never went to the screensaver. Then we would plug it in so it didn't die and we would set our computers up facing one another while he was in bed and while I was in bed. We would have a little chat, we would you know, say goodnight and then we'd go to sleep. And when we woke up, our computers were still on, they had not closed down out of the application so we basically were together all night face to face. Often we would set the computer up, not on the bed, but like on the desk across from the bed. And that way the person could totally see you. Whoever woke up first got an incredible view of the other person still asleep. And every so often we would wake up at the same time. And it was so nice to just wake up and see the other person and just say good morning as if you were in the same room together. My third tip is to give each other space. I know that being apart, you're probably thinking, well, they have enough space because I'm not there and all I want is to be in their space. And I get it, but especially if you're doing long distance throughout school or because of a job, that person really needs to be present where they are. And odds are you need to be present wherever you are too. So it's a really good idea to make sure that even though you stay connected, you let that other person be where they are, experience all the activities that that place has to offer, and that they're really present and feeling like they're getting an individual personalized experience. One thing I personally love about having been in a long distance relationship is that I felt like I got the opportunity 
to grow on my own and to become my own person alongside Michael. And we weren't glued to each other's side the entire time. I got to go to college. I got to experience all that Johns Hopkins had to offer. I was in an acapella group, a sorority. I worked for admissions. I had all my classwork. I was doing my own thing and Michael was doing his own thing at Middlebury. And we really got to grow up and be our own people while we still knew that the other person was there for us. Idea number four is to surprise them by sending them something cute in the mail. Michael used to do this one for me all the time. Everything from flowers to M&Ms with our faces on them. One time I got a ginormous gummy bear the size of my face. It was always something different, it always made me laugh, and it always was just a little delightful surprise that reminded me that there was someone in the world thinking of me in another place. Depending on where your partner is, if they have friends nearby that you are connected to also, you can often plan surprises with their friends. So Michael was constantly in touch with my friends. He was very lucky because he had my twin sister, Allie, who was a good friend of his too, and she was at school with me. But you can reach out to your partner's friends and try to plan things for your friend that they just have no idea about. Oftentimes being in a long distance relationship that spark can seem to be fizzling out because you're not physically together so when you can do these little emotional things just to remind your partner that you're there and you're thinking of them it really makes a huge difference tip five is try to connect with your partner vocally on the phone at least one time a day and I don't mean for an hour or even for 30 minutes you can just connect for five minutes to say hi just to let them hear your voice there were definitely a few days in college when Michael and I were not able to get on the phone and that's it's okay. I'm pretty sure on those days we just texted and we explained to the other person why we were too busy to talk. But even if you just connect for two minutes, like just to say goodnight on the phone and then you hang up, it's a great way to keep that communication alive. Which leads me into my next tip, communicating. Anyone who has been in a long distance relationship will tell you that the number one thing that will get you through is good communication and these people are not lying. The only way to get through a long distance relationship is to be vocal about how you're doing, how you're feeling what you need more of, what you need less of. When you're with a partner in person, it's really easy to get that stuff out just because your body says some stuff and your face says some stuff. And oftentimes your partner knows what you're thinking without you saying much. But when you are physically separated from your partner, you have to vocally tell them exactly how you're feeling and exactly what you want in order for them to know. And this doesn't need to be a formalized, you know, check-in call once a month to say, what do you need? What do you not need? Although if you want to go that route, that's fine. This just means that every time you talk, you are not holding things in or hiding things. Michael and I had plenty of conversations in college regarding things that he needed more of or things I needed more of in the long distance setting. Michael, for example, is one of those people who needs words of affirmation. That's more of his love language than it is mine. But I learned in college that it's absolutely what Michael needs. And in fact, when I don't tell him enough how I'm feeling about him or about our relationship, he starts to feel like I'm not feeling positively. And even when that's just not the case at all, I have to reinforce it. So sharing these things and making sure that you're telling your partner exactly what you need to thrive in the relationship is only gonna help. My next tip is to make plans for future activities together. Obviously, every long distance relationship is gonna be different and maybe you might not be seeing your partner for five years and I truly hope that's not the case. But no matter what the situation is, try to make plans for when you can see your partner next and always have that little date in the future that you're looking forward to. I basically lived through my college experience in countdown mode. Every semester I saw Michael at least once, sometimes twice, and I was always counting down until the next time I saw him. That helped get me through my days, it helped keep me excited for something in the future, and even if you can't be excited for these short-term future activities, maybe you can start thinking about long-term future plans. Where are you going to be in five years from now? What kind of life do you hope to be living together? Plan these things with your partner and actually have activities in mind that are going to be coming soon in the future. One thing we loved doing was planning double date activities for when Michael came to visit me or when I came to visit him. We would go out with friends of his that were in relationships or even and friends of his that were looking for relationships. And now I quickly want to interject to tell you about SHIP. And I have this cool hat to put on for the experience. Actually, I like hats backwards. We're going backwards. 
Oh yeah. So likely if you're watching this video, you're in a relationship, which means you're not currently on dating apps. You're looking at a girl who's never been on a dating app in her entire life because I've been in a relationship since I was 16. So I don't know about you, but I often have felt a little bit left out when my single friends are on dating apps and they're swiping. I've even grabbed their phones from them to try to swipe for them because it is fun to play matchmaker and I do want to be involved in my friends' relationships and my friends' lives. But as someone who's been in a long-term relationship, sometimes that can be difficult. So this is where SHIP comes in and SHIP is easily the most fun dating app in the world. For people in relationships, instead of just sitting at home on your couch and swiping through the app alone, feeling defeated and stressed out, you can actually recruit your friends, your coworkers, your family members to swipe for you. And for people like me who are taken and are not on dating apps for themselves, you can get on SHIP and swipe for your friends. So now that the world is kind of going back to normal and my friends are starting to date again, I am on ship swiping for them all the time and my twin sister is actually newly single as well so I can swipe for her too. On your activity feed you can see who's shipping who and who matched with someone and basically I can sit there for hours, I can swipe left on people who are no-goes, I can swipe right on people who are maybes or definite yeses and then I'll get a pop-up if one of my friends matched with someone. Ship also just launched a new feature called Ship Party which lets you sit on video call with your friends and swipe live with them. Perfect for a quarantine and the kind of weird times we're in where we're all sitting at home and we want to feel like we're hanging out with our friends in real life. So whether you're single or you're taken, click the link in my description box and get on ship. Start swiping for your friends, start letting your friends swipe for you, and date someone that your friends already like and approve of. All right, my next tip. Wait, I really like this hat. I don't want to ruin it. Next tip is to try to know where you're going to be when the distance is up. I know this one is difficult because everyone's situation is different and some people go into long distance relationships indefinitely without knowing when it ends. And I'm not saying that's impossible, but personally I found one of the main reasons I was able to make it through was knowing when the light at the end of the tunnel was coming. I went into college knowing that I was going to be in Baltimore for four years and when college was up I was going to New York. It wasn't up in the air where I was going, I didn't say I'll look into what job opportunities come, I said I'm going to New York and I'm only seeking jobs in New York. And Michael said the same for himself. So we both knew that in 2014, we were going to be in New York side by side. And we didn't live together immediately. We actually waited two more years before we moved in together, but we were in the same city right away. So ideally you have that light at the end of the tunnel and you kind of know that something good is coming, even if it is five, six years down the line. If you don't have that, I'm not saying it's impossible, but it might make things a little bit trickier and a little bit less certain. Next tip is to snap some sexy pics. I'm not telling you to send nudes, but I'm not telling you not to. Be careful, obviously make sure that your internet browser and phone are secure, yada yada yada, gotta go through all the things, but being in a long distance relationship, if you're with a trusted partner who I'm assuming the partner is trusted, do not enter a long distance relationship with someone that you don't trust. But if you trust this person, you wanna keep it saucy. You wanna keep it alive. You want to keep the relationship fresh, dynamic, and interessante, if you know what I'm saying. So if you do wanna send anything, make sure to text them first, make sure they're by their phone, make sure their phone isn't just sitting on a table with a group of friends sitting nearby, and then send them something to excite them. Even if it's not a picture, maybe it's just a strongly worded text, if you know what I'm saying, but send something that makes them really know how badly you wanna be with them in person. And yeah, I hope you're catching my drift. On to the next tip. Read the same book at the same time. Now this one might seem silly, but when I'm reading a book, I get really into it, I get invested in the characters, it gives me a lot to think about and a lot to talk about. So if you and your partner essentially establish a virtual book club with one another, you can be in each other's heads, you can have the same activity at night before you go to bed, and it will just give you an extra layer of something intelligent to talk about and discuss. Another tip is to exchange scents with your partner. If you have a specific cologne or perfume that you like to wear, or even if your clothing just smells like your natural body smell and your partner really likes that smell, swap it. Give them a t-shirt, give them a bra, give them something that they can keep in their drawer that they can constantly pull out and smell and be reminded of you. I am such a smelling, wait, <laughs> I was gonna say I'm such a smelly person. I meant to say, I'm such a type of person who smells bring me places. One inhalation of something and I'm like 
in a past memory of where I was when I last smelled that. And Michael, he did have a specific scent that he used to wear in high school, but also his natural body smell smells so good to me. I know I've said this in a video before. He showers like two times a day, but despite the showers, he always smells good. I've never smelled body odor on him and I cannot say the same for me. But Michael smells so good and all of his clothes smell like him. And I remember when I was in college, I think I had a large t-shirt of his, maybe a baseball jersey from the past, and I just kept them in my drawer and whenever I smelled them, I really smelled Michael. I felt like he was with me and it brought back memories and it made me feel my love for him all over again. So sensory smelling items. Next tip is to actually stop texting your partner altogether and start sending voice messages. This is something I've just started doing in my everyday life to friends and family, partially because I'm lazy and texting takes way longer than just saying what you gotta say. But I actually think in a long distance relationship to have these little voice memos going back and forth over text every day instead of actually sending text with emojis, it's a little bit more personalized and it helps you hear your partner's voice way more often. Part of the reason why getting on a call with your partner is really nice is because hearing their voice brings you back, brings back positive memories, makes you realize how much you miss them and how excited you are to be with them. And when you have these little voice memos that are just being sent back and forth all day, it really does bring you back to that place of being together and just brings you joy. And here's my last tip. It's just a bonus idea. If you wanna do something fun and creative, the next time you're with your partner, have them write down little love messages on tiny pieces of paper, fold all the pieces of paper up and throw them into a jar. And then every day or every week, for the next span of time when you're away, pull one note out of the jar every so often and read it to yourself. They can be little jokes, they can be cute mushy quotes, it can just be a little message about how they feel about you. Whatever it is, I can tell you it will put a smile on your face, it will make you feel loved, it might even make you laugh, and overall it's just gonna be a positive, fun little creative game that you've created together. What I really wanna say to all of you out there is you can do it, tell them. Got it. Say it again. It's gonna happen. You have got this, you can do it. Despite what everyone says, we had every single person around us telling us that we wouldn't be able to do it and that it was too difficult and we might wanna just see what else is out there and we said no. No way. No way. There's no one else out there. There's no one else. He's the only one for me. If you know it's right and it feels right in your gut, stick to your gut. Listen to your heart listen to your soul, don't listen to what other people say because it's really, really hard to explain your feelings to other people and it's really hard at a young age to tell the people in your life that you know who you're gonna marry. Everyone thinks you sound crazy, but how old were you when you knew you were gonna marry me? Seven. <laughs> <laughs> really, how old were you? Um, how old was I, I don't know, 17? Yeah. I was 16. I'm pretty sure I said to him at 16 that I was going to marry him and I really tiptoed around my family and saying that because I knew how ridiculous it sounded, but I knew. I just did. And it happened. So you got this. One day you'll be sitting together just like this on the couch and you'll say, we did it too. And if someone says, how'd you do it? You'll say, I have this great video on YouTube by Lucy Fink <laughs> and her husband, Michael, and you should click it. It's right here. I hope you liked this video. I hope it was helpful for people out there who are in long distance relationships. I seriously feel for you. I know what you're going through and I know you can make it. If you have any questions, comment below. If you're also in a long distance relationship and you have any more amazing tips for what's getting you through, please drop them down below in the comments. After I made my first LDR video, I've received so many messages from people out there who are saying that they felt seen and that it was really, really helpful for them in their relationship. So I'm hoping this video does the exact same thing for you. As always, let me know down below what other types of videos you want to see. On the relationship front, please let me know what would be useful for you and what you're interested in learning more about. And I'm sending you so much love from my New York City apartment. See you next time. Bye!